with Susan with the Noonan Carnegie Library and today I'm here with another book stack for you. Today we're going to be talking about historical fiction. I love historical fiction that takes you away into a time past and gives you a really great story but interweaves some great history in there and you can learn a lot of stuff from historical fiction. So I always enjoy sitting down with a good historical fiction book. So first we're going to talk about The Light of Paris by Eleanor Brown. This is a book about Madeline. She is struggling in her marriage, and it really seems like to people around her that she has everything together, that her life is really wonderful, but inside she's really struggling and not enjoying life at all. Her husband's very controlling, and one day she finds a diary that her grandmother wrote during the Jazz Age, and as she reads and discovers more about her grandmother and her time in Paris, she's really inspired by that. So one day she decides She's going to go to Paris and have a Parisian adventure. So this book is wonderful. It switches back and forth between the diary and what Madeline's going through, which I always enjoy that point of view in historical fiction when it kind of goes back and forth from the present to the past. So this one was so good. Eleanor Brown's books I always really enjoy, so I highly recommend any of her um, works. All right, next up we're going to talk about Catherine of Aragon by Jean Platy. Now, this is a um, historical fiction book that's written about a real historical figure, but it's fictionalized. And so this is about Catherine of Aragon, who um, has to leave her country and go marry um, the prince. Well, the prince dies and she ends up having to marry the next prince, which becomes King Henry. So unfortunately, yes, she is one of King Henry's wives, but this is really great. It goes into so much detail, um, both historical and also fictionalized. And I just really enjoyed this one. I think a lot of people are fascinated with King Henry and all his different wives. And so this really delves into her um, inner life. And this author, um, Jean Platy, is very, very good at fictionalizing real people and not making it seem too like, oh, you're taking liberties with this historical figure. So this one is so good and I also recommend any of Jean's books as well. So next up we have The Ice Cream Queen of Orchard Street. Let's talk about the cover. How pretty is that? So this is set in the um, early 1900s and it's about Milka. She is a Russian immigrant that comes to New York City and she's taken in because she's orphaned by a Italian family who sells ices on the street. She really survives her time in New York City by being really smart and cunning and um, just making a life for herself outside of her family who is gone. So she meets and marries this handsome man and they suddenly decide they're gonna start selling ice cream everywhere. And all of a sudden, her career really takes off and she becomes the ice cream queen of America. So this is kind of a story, it goes into a lots of history, the history of things like tenements in New York City and different things that are going on in the country at this time and how people who were immigrants could really reach higher statuses. And she even goes on like TV when TV comes and she's very famous. So this one is so great, it has so much great history in it and I really enjoyed this one. And this is by Susan Jane Gilman and I just really enjoyed this. And who doesn't love a book about ice cream? Next up, we have Atonement by Ian McEwen. This is a wonderful book. Um, this is about the time right before World War II and things that happened during World War II. It's about a young girl who thinks she sees something, but she's not sure. And because she sees this, she creates chaos in her wake. And this is kind of a storytelling about all the chaos that's created by it and what happens to it. But it delves a lot into the history of the time as well as World War II and what follows World War II. So this one is really excellent. There's also a movie that was made of atonement and I highly recommend both of them. Um, these are the actors who are in it, but it's a really excellent book. Let's see, next up we have The Prisoner's Wife by Maggie Brooks. This book is actually based on a true story that the author heard one day and it was so fascinating to her. She did research on it and she couldn't find out a lot about this couple, but all she knows is it is based on a real couple. So this is a story of Bill and Isabella. Isabella is a Czech farm girl and Bill is a prisoner of war of the Nazis. So this is during World War II. And so um, Bill comes to her farm to do some free farm work for her family and they secretly fall in love and they end up getting married and they run away. So here's the thing. Once they run away, they get caught and Isabella has dressed up like a man in order to get past um, patrols and things like that because she knows it's very dangerous to go across the countryside as a woman. 
So they get captured and they become prisoners of war. Now everybody thinks Isabel is a man. So this is a story of how they end up in a prisoner of war camp and it's about the friendships they make with other prisoners. And it's just such a moving story and knowing that there's um, uh, that it's true is just really moving. And this is a beautiful book. It just came out this year and I really enjoy this one. It's really well written and the story is really great. So I highly recommend this one. So next up, we're gonna talk about The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This is another World War II book. You'll find that there's a lot of historical fiction books written about World War II. I think there's probably more written on World War II than any other period in history, but this one is really good. This is another one that goes between a modern day um, storyteller and then goes back in time to the time during World War II. So this is a really, really good book. I highly recommend it. It's a story of two sisters and what they have to go through in order to get through World War II. So as these two sisters are telling their stories and they're kind of years apart, you just find this to be um, just a moving book. It brings up a lot of emotions and there's some great historical stuff in here as well. So I highly recommend this book for sure. Next up, we have another World War II book. I told you there's a lot of World War II books. So this one is Daughter of the Reich by Louise Fine. And this is a story of a girl who is the daughter of a high-ranking Nazi official. So Hetty is um, really into this new world that's coming. She starts to join all these organizations and she really kind of buys into the propaganda. And then all of a sudden she meets Walter, who is a young Jewish boy, and he starts showing her that things aren't always what they seem. And it kind of opens her eyes as she realizes what's really going on around her. So she and Walter fall in love. And so she starts worrying about the role that her father is playing in all of this um, Nazi regime. So this is a book that really makes you hold your breath. It's kind of scary in places because it's a really dangerous situation, but it really makes you think this is an excellent book. This just came out this year as well. And let's look at the cover because it's really a gorgeous cover. Look at that. It's beautiful. But um, this is a really moving book and I really enjoyed reading it. It's Daughter of the Reich by Louise Fine. All right. Next up, we have The Lost Girls of Paris by Pam Jenoff. Her books are really great. This one is initially set in the 1940s. A young woman finds a suitcase full of pictures of other young women and she tries to set out and solve this mystery of where the suitcase is. And this is how she finds out about this group of women who did secret stuff during World War II. And so she kind of does a lot of research on it and figures out what's going on. And this one is so good. I don't want to say more because I don't want to do any spoilers, but I highly recommend this one. I couldn't put it down. I just had to keep turning the pages to find out what happened. And I really loved it. So read this one and really any of Pam's books are excellent historical fiction picks. Next up, we'll talk about The Woman in the Castle by Jessica Chatouk. This is a book about the time right after World War II has ended. Marianne has to make her way back to her husband's family home, which is a castle, and the Nazis had been occupying it during the war. She's also the um, widow of a resistor to the Nazis who was killed by them, so she's also dealing with her grief. And along the way, as she's making her way to her husband's childhood home, she picks up some stray people along the way. And this is a story of how they continue to make it in these really bad, post-war period and the family that she makes because she doesn't have any family left and everybody in this book has to like come to terms with the choices they've made during the war so this one was really interesting and I highly recommend it the history in this is great so next up we'll talk about Tiny Little Thing by Beatrice Williams this is a book that's one of three books in the series about these sisters the Schuyler sisters, no, not those Schuyler sisters. These are different Schuyler sisters. So this book is about Tiny. It's set in 1966 and Tiny's husband is a rising politician. So this is kind of the story of how they start questioning things that's in their lives and they start seeing that they could have different paths. Her husband's very powerful in politics. This is a beautiful story that's set on Cape Cod where her family home is and it talks a lot about like the sisters and family and secrets and all sorts of stuff. I loved this book. Any of Beatrice Williams books I always really enjoy so I recommend any of her work. Next up we'll talk about Kiss Carlo by Adriana Triagani. Oh I love this book. This was funny. This was about a Philly cab driver who is in a family where they've always driven cabs but he wants more. He wants to be an actor. And this chance comes up for him to play a really big role in real life. And so he 
grabs it. So he kind of runs off. And this is a story of really pursuing your passions no matter where you are in life. And this book I found to be so funny. They get up to a lot of hijinks in this. And I really enjoyed the historical aspects of this as well. It's very Italian. Everyone in here is Italian. And um, Nikki, the protagonist, ends up going to Italy to do this special project. And it's really funny. I don't want to say more because there's a little bit of twists in this book. But this one was really excellent. And this cover is really pretty. It's a gorgeous cover. But I highly recommend this book. And any books by her are really great. So those are all the books I have for you today in the historical fiction category. I hope you enjoyed this. And stay tuned for more book reviews. Have a great day.